Molly, thank you so much for the opportunity to chat. It's, I appreciate it, and the film is great. Thank you. Where did the idea come from? Uh, the idea for Fitting In came from the deep, <laughs> repressed, uh, horrific experience I had as a teenager being diagnosed with MRKH syndrome. Um, and it's definitely been a little bit of a personal exorcism uh, in making this film. But at the same time, it's uh, it's been fictionalized. It's now contemporary versus when I was diagnosed. Um, and like anything, you craft it to become different. Like I'm not making a documentary by any means, but um, yeah, it definitely is is drawing on my own life very heavily. You know, it feels like a personal film on any number of levels, and uh, it really is a wonderful story. Um, one of the things I was wondering too is. The same, something comes out in the film is how do I say this well? I want to say this well. I feel like the film dabbles with the toxicity of normal. Mm -hmm. That's a great way of putting it. I, I was wondering your thoughts on that idea. Um, the toxicity of normal is a very great phrase that I will <laughs> repurpose. <laughs> it's yours. Put that in my toolbox. Um, absolutely. I mean, I think that applies to every single one of us as human beings. Um, I think, you know, for all of us, there is who we present in the world and who we actually are. And if you're in alignment, it's pretty close, but sometimes it's like this, you know, and, um, what, what is normal? Who are we comparing to? Um, and I think it, obviously this is a female lens, but I also do try to touch on a little bit for men, like there's expectations of young men as well. Um, and I think all of us suffer from uh, the expectation to be one thing or another. Uh, I love that because that you can see everybody in this film is struggling with the expectations of other people. It yeah. feels like even her relationship with her mother and her mother's trying to figure out who she is and she not who her mother is, I should say. Yeah. Not, and um, there's so many different characters wrestling with kind of the same question, yeah. but in completely different ways. Yeah, and that, that was um, crafted for sure. Um, the main focus is obviously Lindy, but every character to some degree, as you said, is uh, struggling with, uh, you know, who they are externally and internally. Like even with um, Adam, her boyfriend played by DeFaro Wunatai, there's a scene at the lockers where he's kind of being sweet and vulnerable and a bunch of guy friends walk by and we see his posture change and how he's speaking to Lindy change. And like, even just a subtle thing like that is, you know, uh, I have teenage nephews. I see how beautifully sweet and kind and empathetic they are. And then their like friend comes over and it's like, what, <laughs> who are you? Um, so just seeing that switch with, with young men too. Um, and I don't think we get to see young men being sweet or bumbling or confused. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to, um, really villainize them you know there's there's really there's no bad guys here it's just people are doing the rest well it, it it's i think that's a great way to put it and it's interesting because you know the men in the film i'm watching them and they're bothering me yeah and it's like and and her her conversations with doctors and and the mm -hmm. the the you get the sense that they think they're being supportive mm -hmm. but they really don't know what they're talking about and they're putting again expectations um, I, I was just wondering, uh, from your perspective, the importance of supportive relationships, especially amongst women. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that, what, is, what do those look like? What do women need from one another? Um, I'm the youngest of five girls, so I have a lot of uh, support from women in, in my life. Um, I think women need to tell the truth about their pain. Um, I just, I think in general for, for everybody, for all of our relationships, I think a willingness to say what's uncomfortable. Um, you know, there's a saying that like shame doesn't work anymore in the light of day. Um, and I just wish all of us would be more willing to share the stickiest parts of ourselves. Um, not only because it feels good to release it, but you doing that may make someone else feel seen or less alone. So I'm so glad you said that. And um, one of the things, one of the lines I love in the film in particular is one is uh, one character says to own who you are, 
but I want to make sure I get it right. To own who you are, however you define yourself, is up to you. Yeah. I was wondering what that means to you, because that, that line just hits so deeply, I think. Um, yeah, I think that um, luckily now we have uh, so much better language in terms of how people uh, can identify with, and I think that's a beautiful thing, but we are all more than words and labels, and that's what that line was trying to say. Like, ultimately, you, you are yourself. Uh, who you know yourself to be is what you are. Um, no word or person or projection or societal expectation should change that. Just juking a little bit to the left yeah, here. Go. Just we're, we're starting to run out of time. I really wanted to ask you about the use of Barbie girl. Yeah. Because, you know, that I, I remember when that song came out and people were singing it yeah. and all that stuff, but it, it seems to have taken, it, it, well, it has taken on different relationship to culture now it's so funny that line the barbie girl song has been in the script for a long time and i it came to me once i was in traffic in la and there was a jeep with some ken looking guy i swear to god blasting it and i was like i haven't heard this song in freaking forever and i was thinking about the script and the lyrics became so profound to me and i was like this is perfect and i always wanted to do kind of it it uh decomposed version of it um and then obviously i knew barbie was in the works and i was like well i'm going to delete that song from the script however deadline published an article saying greta gerwig was not using barbie girl and the music supervisor and i were off to the races um and you know i'm, I'm glad this film premiered before barbie girl but it is really kind of strange timing and uh Barbie, in my opinion, might have MRKH. The first thing she says to the world, she says to those construction workers, I don't have a vagina. And then she goes to the gynecologist at the end. So is bloody or is fitting in the sequel to Barbie? I don't know. That is fascinating. I had not considered that, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it really is a wonderful film and so heartfelt. Uh, just I'm wondering, as we wrap up, what you hope audiences take away from fitting in. I hope audiences who see this feel a little bit of um, comfort in themselves and I hope um, are given a little bit of encouragement to uh, share the things we don't share and to know that you are still worthy of love. That means a lot. I'm so thank and thank you for sharing some of your story with me. Thank you for sharing this film with me and us. Yeah. And uh, thank you for this conversation. I really appreciate it. It was so great. Really nice questions, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>